All right, everybody, we will get started. Uh, welcome, welcome or welcome back to our spring journalism uh, lecture series. My name is Will Yerman. I teach here in the journalism department and I'm gonna introduce our guests in just a moment. Um, just a couple of things. I want to uh, thank, as I always do, uh, Joe and Shirley Eberly, whose funds help support this lecture series and a lot of other activities that we're able to do on campus. They started an endowment in honor of Joe's father, uh, who was a uh, student here a long time ago and went on to a long career in journalism and writing. And um, their support means a lot to us um, in honor of their father and, and lets us do uh, things like this. A quick look ahead, we've got speakers pretty much every Tuesday through mid-April. Next week, we have Lynn Johnson, who's a photographer for National Geographic um, and has had an amazing career, and I'm really looking forward to her talk. And then the following week, we have another visual artist. We have a comic book artist and a graphic, a nonfiction creator, a John Durf Backdurf. Um, and then we have talks going, as I said, right through April. So if you've never been in one of these webinars before, um, you can rest easy. We can't see you. We can't hear you. So you can... Uh, kind of sit back. Um, but you are encouraged to ask questions and you can do that either with the chat or Q&A functions that are probably at the bottom of your screen or top of your screen, depending what kind of device you have. Um, yeah, with that, let me introduce our guest. I'm, I'm so thrilled to have Ben Garvin here. I've, I've known Ben for a long time and I followed his work for decades, literally decades, um, back when we were both still photographers at a newspaper and the web was becoming a thing. Ben was one of those people who was doing all this wonderful, innovative, creative work that was really inspiring. And I've, I've followed his career for a long time. Um, and most recently, he's just completed a long form documentary. Um, if you've seen it, uh, you're very lucky. And if you haven't seen it, while Ben's talking, I'll put a link to it in the chat. It's really amazing. I watched it this weekend and really loved it. And cried a bit and I think you will too. So um, so yeah, so um, Ben's gonna talk and at the end I'll come back and we'll, we'll take some questions from everybody. So I'm looking forward to that. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ben. Thank you. Thank you, Will. It was, it's an honor to be, it's a lot of fun to be here. And uh, it's uh, fun to be a part of the, the Penn State community. Um, I know a little bit about it through my friend, Kurt Chandler, who I see on the call here. Um, we work together at a couple workshops and. Um, I know you guys have a great journalism program and I'm, I'm really delighted to be here. So I think my plan is just because I'm not, I'm not really well versed in how to do this online. So I'm, you know, it's, it's easier for me to see faces, but I'm just going to like pretend you're there. And, and I have some pre-made slides I'm just going to share and talk a little bit about kind of my path, but also give you some just general, maybe useful, maybe dumb advice to, to that I, that I would have wished to have had when I was a student. Um, and then I'll show you some of my work. Um, and I'm going to try to do some video. I have pictures, which will be better for, for Zoom, but I'm going to try to share a little video here and there. And, um, you know, well, it's going to be crappy quality, but we're just going to go with it. So, um, and I'll try to keep a, a peek, uh, an eye on the um, the chat. So, you know, and we'll feel free if you someone asks a quick question, you want to interrupt me, um, by all means. Uh, I'm not going to keep that close of an eye on it, but I'm happy to, uh, to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get started here. Uh, and uh, I'm hoping that you can see this this picture. Um, uh, I, I just want to start for, for when I was uh, I grew up in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and when I was uh, um, freshman in college, freshman in college, I went to the University of Arkansas and studied creative writing. And I realized, and it's it's I, I like it. I, I like to write. It's fun. But I really I really love is photography. So I transferred to RIT, which is in Rochester, New York, and it was extremely scary. And I remember the first week there. Um, I literally just didn't know anybody and I was on my bed crying at night. It was really scary. It was a really hard moment for me. And so I Googled, you know, crying in bed and this is the picture that came up. So I wanted to illustrate that because, you know, it's I'm a visual person so we can see, you know, so that's what came up. Um, but, but I, I only mentioned that because it was a, it was a scary moment for me just to leave and get the hell out of town and go to a whole nother part of the world. Um, and, and I, and I also, some, sometimes I have regret because I realized when I was younger and and at that moment where I, I could go to college and try to get a job in an internship, or I could also just say, you know, I'm going to take a year off and, and get some experience that will, that will open my eyes and kind of help me see the world a bit. So um, I, I always like to remind students that, you know, if you wanted to take a year off and just go do something fun, um, uh, by all means. Um, so um, I was thinking like going on a fishing boat in Alaska, you know, is a picture of crime. Anyway, um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is this idea that um, uh, Again, you know, right? It's not as true right now, but um, for those of you who who are are want to be a journalist or interested in the world, 
be, because you, you know you're interested in people. Um, one thing I learned early on is I, is uh, is all I needed to do is to, to see the world was just to, to to save up for a plane ticket. And I got to go somewhere and be inspired and meet people and 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 realize that the world was large, larger than my small world in, in Northwest Arkansas. So um, early on, I I remember I ended up buying a plane ticket. And here I am in in Ghana. I was covering with a friend of mine who was a writer. I was we were covering um, kind of the civil war a little bit in Ivory Coast. It wasn't like hardcore war photography, but it was a little. It was fun. It was interesting. And then we went over to Ghana, and here I am on this largest man-made lake in the world with our um, our boat operator urinating in the background. And this is a moment I won't forget. And I I, I was able to experience this just because uh, I bought a plane ticket, and here I am in Africa. And that was really fun for me, and it just helped me kind of open my eyes a little bit. And I'm a couple of pictures from from uh, my time over there. Uh, these are amazing, but uh, you know I probably could have a better way to display these, but I'm just going to flip through them. Um, and, and I mentioned this because as a student, I realized early on I had this power to to reach out to people who were doing stuff I admired, and they would meet with me and they would want to talk to me and share what they knew. And that's true for me, you know, it, it, and it's true for I think most people like. Uh, if there's a photographer you deeply admire, like Lynn Johnson next week, she's, I'm so glad she's coming. She's really, one. Of, she inspired me early on and um, she's a really amazing thinker. And, and um, you could just write Lynn Johnson and say, I love your work. Can we meet sometime? I just wanna ask you some questions. And boy, people just love to be asked uh, to talk about their work. I mean, you can't go wrong. And so if, you, if you're nervous about it, it is, it is uh, intimidating, but I just wanted to remind you that all it takes is an email to reach out to somebody. I remember when I was in, in college, I did this, uh, Michelle um, Michelle Stevenson, I think, uh, the director of photography at Time Magazine. I was working in New York, printing color photography at night and just sort of, I wanted to be in New York City and I was freelancing a little bit for the AP. And I just called her on the phone because back then that's what you do. And I said, um, you know, I, I'm in town. I'm, I have, I'd love to show you my portfolio. I'm a student from RIT. She's come on up. So I went to Rockefeller Center and just took the, 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 the elevator up to like the gazillion floor to her corner office and she sat down and looked through my portfolio and it was a terrible body of work. I wasn't, it was not that like good. And she told me that, but she also said in the end, she said, oh, I don't know why more students don't come and meet with me. And it just, it was a realization that in order to be around people that you admire, you just gotta, gotta call them up. And whether it's journalism or if you wanna be a writer or you wanna be an illustrator, um, it doesn't have to be anyone famous, just someone that you, you know, uh, you will learn so much and it'll offer a connection. And right now it's easy with Zoom. People, people, you know, don't always have the time, but I think that typically they would. And and you have a certain power of of uh, naivety when you're a student. You can you can always just say, Hi, I'm just a student. Start with that. And boy, uh, the doors open. So there's a power in, in, in education right now for you. Um, because you're not really looking for a job necessarily as you are just wanting to grow and learn. So um and also when I was in New York, I happened to meet my wife. Um, you know, I was from from uh, Arkansas. She was going to New York to study music. She's from Minnesota. We ended up having a lot of children. These are my beautiful family. This is a few years ago. Um, and uh, and also that was a, a, a nice moment for me. I don't know why I'm showing you this, but I, I'm just really proud of my family. And I'll show you something later about that. But um, this is another thing I wanted to talk about briefly is throughout my entire career, I've always worked with people who um, who, and I think you guys all know people like this, where if something isn't working out, they will let you know. And 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 it's easy to kind of focus on on the bad parts of of uh, your school, of of your relationship with the person you love, or or um or for me it was my job. I mean, I think the challenge with any job, once you know, if you work or if you get an internship or if you're maybe working now, is is to find the parts that aren't terrible, because it's so easy to be focused on the terrible and have that fill you up and have that direct your decisions. And then before you know it, you're just kind of a, kind of grumpy about stuff. And I think it's it's been my challenge is to to find the good in every everything every place I've been, and to find find the avenues where I could do something special, and then just enlarge that and, and focus on, on on what's possible, even when I'm working with people who are uninspired, who don't understand what I want to do, who may not care about um, the journalism that I'm interested in, and and I I could easily just kind of let that bring me down. And I've done that I've done that many times. I'm not guilty. I'm not not guilty of that but i think the challenge is to is to not just stay positive but to but to find what's possible and go straight for that so um that's what i've tried to do in every job i've had including at the concord monitor where i work with dan habib who is really a brilliant photo editor he's now a filmmaker um and here at the pioneer press i started a photo column um i also had this column in 
New Hampshire, but a photo column in, in the Pioneer Press called Ant Farm, which is this idea of like looking in a window and seeing people's lives. And so I would, it, it was before a lot of multimedia was a deal, and I would just take pictures and then do a, a interview and I'd transcribe it and edit it down and just be picture and interview. And I made a book from it. It was like a fun thing for me to do, but it was just, you know, the the, uh, the newspaper needed um, regular content on Mondays in the local section. I could provide that. I could get this time and space to do work that I cared about more than just being given some crappy assignment that I didn't really want to do, but I did it because I got to get paid. So I was able to carve out a space to where I could do work that really resonated more with my heart and my vision as a journalist. So there's a couple pictures. There's like a fashion show. And I talked to this woman about um, just what it's like to be in a fashion show. And it was pretty interesting. Um, this is just another feeling I've had throughout the years is that um, it, uh, I've always done better when I'm uncomfortable in a, in a, in a place in, in, when it comes to professional stuff, because I think we're forced to grow more. So, um, you know, if you want to get a job working at a restaurant and you never waited tables, don't, you know, it's an example, like, don't just say, I don't, couldn't get that, I never waited tables. You just get it anyway. And you, and you pump up the little tiny experience you have, make it sound bigger. And you just put yourself in positions where you may not feel comfortable, but uh, you will grow more rather than just finding stuff that you know you could kick ass at already because you have that experience. But think about, you know, I, I just, I just, I, I've learned over the years, um, and, and this is true later, I can talk about it. I went from still photographer to video. It was very scary and I was way out of my element, but it provided a chance for me to really grow. Um, so I'm gonna keep on moving. Oh, this is an example. I'm from Arkansas. They don't have hockey in Arkansas. I don't know what the hell hockey is. Um, and it was very scary and I was out of my element. And then this is when I got a job with the Pioneer Press. And you can just see like, oh, okay, let's just zoom in here. No, okay, that's as big. Um, so this is funny to me because, it, you know, hockey is a violent sport. And I'm sure many of you are big hockey fans. And I don't actually, um, interestingly, for the last eight years in Minnesota, I've made a hockey rink in my backyard for my children. It's a small one. And I've gotten good at skating and it's fun. We have a great time. But um, a professional hockey, oh, my God. I mean, just the fights, I, I, I couldn't fathom that. That was when I first shot a game and they were punching each other in the face. I'm like, is anybody going to stop this fight? So but anyway, I was out of my element and I definitely grew as a photographer. I was shooting a lot of professional sports. And and uh, even though I'm not like a big sports fan necessarily, what a challenging environment that was. And it was fun to travel with the team and stuff. And I really, I, I love that. Um, I don't miss it now though. I, I guess I put this in here just as a chance to reflect on, and I, and I don't mean to assume that you want to be a journalist. This slide kind of assumes that. I know that many of you come at this from different perspectives and you are and you may not want to be a journalist or you may not want to be one in the, I don't know, whatever. But I ended up having to ask myself this question because, um, you know, early on, um, I mean, I was driven by my ego and I still am. I, I'm, I'm guilty of that. I wanted to be good. I wanted to get recognition. Um, but um, I think I think now that I'm a little older, I realize that we have a, a real power to make a difference. And now I'm going to talk about that a little later. But anyway, um, I had a lot of fun as a journalist. I know that's one reason I had one of the deal. I, I got, this is a, an aerial photo and I got to fly around and do a little aerial photography, really fun. I love politics. I'm a big political junkie. I love the campaign trail. And, and, um, and when I was working in New Hampshire, I did a lot of uh, the New Hampshire political primary stuff and that just gave me great, great joy. Um, and so that was fun. I enjoyed that. Um, again, just breaking news. Uh, you guys, probably, I know you all know this story. Um, that that's uh, fun for me. It was fun for me to do this kind of work, um, but but there's a, a, a emptiness to it eventually that I, I found. But anyway, I've also done over the years a lot of freelance for the Washington Post and New York Times, and I'm just showing this because I have an ego and I wanted to show you how awesome this this is on the front page. I, this happened a few times for me. This was uh, um, Michael Moss's story on food poisoning and his story won a Pulitzer. I didn't win a Pulitzer, but um, I I was uh, honored to be able to be a photographer on that story. Um, another reason to be a journalist, I already talked about this, is just having fun. I mean, I, I love being out in the world and, and meeting people and, and, and uh, being creative, coming up with new ideas. Uh, one of those ideas is these, this, um, you know, when I, when I moved to CARE 11 from, well, I'll just briefly my career, I started out as a still photographer for many years, started to be in Pioneer Press, New Hampshire, and then I switched over to video and I did full time at CARE 11, which is the NBC affiliate here in Minneapolis, and I was there for five years. And when I first got there, I had this idea, what if I just got a big ass ear and walked around the state fair with a camera and asked people a question? And what would that be like to be that uh, literal about listening? And would it be, would it work? Would it be funny? So I'm going to show you one of those videos. 
And Will, I'm going to have you, if this doesn't work for any reason, let me know. I'm just going to assume it's going to play through and, and work. And, uh, I'll let you know. OK, here we go. <laughs> What's something that you're proud of? I lost a tooth today. Uh, I feel proud of getting on the honor roll. A female construction worker. I'm proud of being open-minded senior citizen. My glasses. I voted for the first time this year. I'm proud of overcoming my arthritis. Catching a big fish. Me cleaning my room every day. I'm proud of our fellow Marines. Three years ago broke my hip, and they told me I might not walk again, and here I am. I bought a book. Windows. Hey, what are you proud of? I am proud of the fact that I'm an American. The fact that God has given me the opportunity to live the American dream. I'm proud of my brother Gary, he lost 50 pounds. I am proud of my sexuality. I'm proud of myself because I'm really smart. Proud of my sobriety. I'm proud that I love myself and don't care what people think about me. I'm proud of my dad and the things he taught me. My jump shot. I'm proud that I live with my parents and I'm 33 years old. <laughs> A blue belt in karate. I'm proud of my little brother Eli. Being able to bring my Iraqi translator and his family over to the Minnesota State Fair for the first time ever. <laughs> my husband. <laughs> she said that. I swear to God, I'm not lying. <laughs> oh, I love that. Did that work out, Will? You guys could hear that? Oops, sorry, yes, that worked great. At least for my end, it sounded great. I hope it did okay, for everyone. Okay. I'm going to assume it worked for everybody. So uh, good, because uh, I have a couple other videos I want to share. Um, but when I first was doing a still photography for a long time, I started to learn video. And what an intimidating thing that is. And I think a lot of students, maybe you kind of are growing up in a world where you're asked to learn both. And that's brilliant. And I only mention this because uh, I think when you learn any new skill, one thing I learned early on is, and I think, um, I think it's just to, to learn the program, learn the technology before you start the creative process. And I think um, I've tried it the other way around where I just jump in and try to do something and it's just so frustrating. You know, like if you try to if you try to build a website and you don't know how to use Dreamweaver or whatever, you're gonna be really frustrated. So I remember when I first switched to video, I just watched this, um, you know, there's like Adobe TV or this um, website called lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com. And they step-by-step -step walk you through every single tool in a program and it's very boring sometimes. It's very literal. They assume you know nothing, but it you you uh you have such facility by the time you're done to really express your creative part of you. So so I just think I remember um, being intimidated by video because it looked like this to me, and this is a little over the top. But video is very complicated, and 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 I think what I want to do is help people arrive at a feeling and and feel deeply and be inspired by other people's stories and their art and whatever. And, and I don't want to be hindered, hindered by the technology. So it's just so important to really focus on learning the technology and then moving on to um, the creative process. And it seems a little like the antithesis of the way it might need to work, but it helps for me to think of it like that. Um, there we go. That's kind of what I just said. Um, OK, early on, uh, this is fascinating. I, I, this is me. You can see me in the background at CARE 11. They, they put me right in the, in the direct line of the live newsroom shot. And I wondered, uh, why Why would you do this? Like, I'm a new guy. What is the reasoning to have me right behind? And I learned early on that um, they did a study. And uh, let me, before I start talking about the study. Oh, uh, yeah, they did a study. And it, it, they learned that, um, that, um, that bald men with beards really have a certain credibility and a gravitas. And so they put me back there and it really increased the ratings. And here's a, here's a shot of that. Yeah, Randy and Julie, uh, the mayor of Denison tells me this is a problem not just for his town, but towns all across the state of Minnesota. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> is that tight enough? Is that good? Yeah, I like it's it. good. Do you, like, do you like the spin? Yeah, I like the spin. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do that? Uh, <laughs> this is my uh, uh, silly little, uh, I did a little April Fool's joke where I wrote this big, long, complicated thing about how, how bald men have credibility. And I, have, I, I show all these shots of newsroom live shots, and they'd be walking through the background just editing a computer. Uh, I had a lot of fun. But anyway, that was uh, that's, that's actually not true. Uh, anyway, um, I talked about this, and I, and, I, and I wanted to share this just to make it more of a point, this idea I've learned. And this is, it feels dumb to say I've learned this because it's obviously true. But there's an absolute privilege we have as journalists 
um, and to change the world. Cheesy, but it's true. I really feel that's true. And and the the, the moment I don't I don't recognize that is the moment I, you know, wh why do it? Why not make room for someone else? You know. So I think um, I, you know, uh, that's when I realized what can I do that's going to really make an impact, gonna gonna fill my soul up, and make me feel like I'm doing something of value. Because a lot of times when you're working in daily news. Um, you kind of are slowly uh, your soul sucking experience where you shoot a press conference and the car crash and and um, there you start to question like what what am I doing? So I, we me and my colleague Lindsay Siebert we asked can we spend a year at one elementary school following this one extraordinary leader this woman who um, just speaks truth to power and is a brilliant leader an African American woman in North Minneapolis which is um, kind of an underserved part of our community um, and uh, and she. You know, and, and how can Lindsay and I just be listeners and and uh, as Lindsay says, a vessel? So, um, I thought I, I could show you the trailer to the film. But um, I, I think I think what I'm going to do. Let me see how much time we have. I, I think we have enough time. I'm going to show you the first five minutes of the film to me, which is a little more better than the trailer. More better is another word. And then I, uh, and then you can watch the film if you if you want to. I don't. That doesn't matter to me. I I'd love you to, but it's not like you need. Um, so let's see. It's on YouTube and, and it's on Amazon Prime, but this is just the beginning of the film. It's just like five minutes. This will be the longest thing I show you. Um, here we go. We are trying to undo history. We are trying to prove people wrong. Show me an almost all black, almost all poverty school that has done this. For the last, what, 18 years, we've been on the list. A turnaround school, a grade F school, a red school, whatever you want to call it. Those labels are real. If you question your ability, you have three days to get over it. Because I bleed this school and there is no way I would have you here if I did not think you could do it. If you have any doubt in your mind, this is not for the faint of heart. And whatever you need to do, if you need to pray, if you need to go to happy hour today <laughs> and get it all out of your system, whatever you need to do, do it. Because when these kids walk in the door on Monday, I need you to be the greatest. It's just, it's a, it's a different feeling over here, you know? All right. <laughs> it's not the same as everywhere else, and I just love it. This is where I belong. Like, these are my people right here. Back to school. We're from Lucy Laney. What's going on? Oh, that's Brandon. Hey, come on out here, boy. Mom, we want to let you know that uh, we have our open house on Friday. And so um, school starts on Monday, you know that? All right. You can meet your teacher, okay? The only thing you see on the news about North Minneapolis is somebody got shot. These kids have seen more than enough. They see more than they should, so this is ridiculous. Back to school. Lucy Laney. What up, boy? Ah! Hey! You, you back in action! Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. We are having a back to school open house, all right? So tell mom and dad, if you need clothes and shoes, one dollar, all right? That's all you need to bring, okay? You ready? Hey. Fifth grade? When I say Lucy, you say Lane. You ready? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, you gonna be loud? No. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy! Lucy! All right, I'll see you later, man. All right, boy, boy. Thank you. Summer just went by so quick. It looks great. Yeah. You nervous? A little bit. Isn't it awesome? It's such an explosion of happiness. Oh my. <laughs> There are people who have little to no hope for public education, little to no hope for uh, children of color, period. And definitely little to no hope for North Minneapolis and children in North Minneapolis. And some of them have very valid reasons to be hopeless, but I choose hope. I choose to believe. I choose to. And even if I'm proven wrong, I will go down believing. All right. Okay. Well, that's just the opening of the film. Um, maybe I should have shown you the trailer. I don't know. But um, you can get a sense of, of uh, the, um, the singular character, Maria's, and she drives this, you know, I, I, one thing I learned um, early on in, in making a film is that you just need a good character. You need someone to to stick with, you know, and because I think the challenge, I think, is any any journalist knows or any your student have experienced is that we walk into a, a cool story and just so many things are happening. You're just so tempted to kind of shoot everything that moves. And I think getting a focus for your story, for your, in my case, a documentary, our focus was Mari, and also this girl on screen here, um, Sophia, uh, she ended up being another kind of star of the, the, um, the film. Uh, and, you know, uh, I hope you can check the film out, but I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Um, uh, it was the most fun of my life. Uh, I've never had so much fun just being so deeply immersed in um, a complex story, how to build characters and build scenes. And, um, you know, um, this is a, a, a filmmaker on a right, Melody Gilbert and Lindsay in the background, just hours and hours and hours editing. Um, I got to go to this fancy studio in uh, Minneapolis and do all the coloring, colorizing and whatnot. Um, I learned so much about that and about um, releases. I just, it was just like a really fun um, growth opportunity. I learned a lot about making a film and I realized I want to do it again. Um, I think other, other thing is like, um, we early on, we had some screenings uh, in, in North Minneapolis. This is a KMOJ radio station, sort of a, a black owned and operated station. Uh, because Lindsay and I are both white and there's this kind of recognition early on. We remember speaking to the entire staff at Lucy Laney and, um, and just kind of saying, um, we recognize we are, are uh, we don't know anything about Lucy Laney. We're, we're living a privileged life and I recognize that. Uh, I try to, I know sometimes I take that for granted, but we, we want to just come in here and, and listen and, and, and provide a, 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 a voice for um, you to say what is, on your heart as teachers and the staff and to the children. And I remember many of the interviews we did with kids um, really brought the camera down low. So you're not kind of looking down at a kid, but you're, you're looking in, in the eyes. And I think that makes such a, a, a difference, both just in the technique of filming, but also in the, in, the, in the subtle communication you send to a child. Like, I'm really gonna listen to you and I'm not going to um, in any way diminish who you are or your value. And I think by giving children that space, you really, um, they said some really extraordinary things that just uh, broke our heart and really deeply moved us. I remember editing through tears many times. Um, and I met an amazing group of people. Um, so many of the students and staff, uh, you know, um, it was just so much fun to, to be able to spend that much time on one story and not just come in for a day and leave like so much of our daily journalism. Um, and I realized that's all I wanna do. I, I don't want to run out, shoot something and put it on TV and then uh, then go home. I, I mean, I'm not really interested in that anymore. I want to be able to really sink my teeth in and spend time with the story. And so um, 
So I, I feel like kind of this move doing this film at a TV station, which was a great honor. Carol Levin made this possible. Like, wow, that's crazy. Um, I realized that's what I want to do again. And Carol Levin doesn't necessarily have the stomach for it. Um, so, uh, but anyway, I want to show you a couple more pictures and talk a little bit more about that. But we got to go to film festivals and travel a little bit. It was really fun. Get to see theaters of hundreds of people all crying and laughing and feeling these deep feelings, you know, uh, uh, not just our film, but but on the story of, of Mari and her students and, and to feel connected to them in a way that um, wasn't a, necessarily about Lindsay or I, but we just kind of provided a, a window into this school. Um, really powerful, really fun, really rewarding and and uh, change making. There's a lot of change that's happened locally in Minnesota and this film continues to be used um, as a training tool for teachers and staff and and uh, and viewed on Amazon, like it's, um, it's still out in the world. So um, it's been fun to have that make a change. So briefly, uh, I know that you don't necessarily, I mean, this is more like, if you wanna learn how to do a documentary, I could talk about this, but just real briefly, um, with a documentary, I, I realized something has to change over time. And this is an obvious thing, but it has to be like a narrative arc. Um, and you can't just see someone, some character for an hour and then, but it has, something has to, has to be some reason to keep watching. Cause I think one thing I've always learned in any video I've done is like this idea of fighting boredom. It's such a, such an ever present feeling I have. Um, the moment someone gets bored, especially now when there's so many videos and things on YouTube and blah, 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 and Facebook and things you wanna check on Twitter. Like if you get bored, you're just gonna click off. And same thing with a, a, a movie. So um, I think in anything I've, I've done, I've always kind of asked myself, am I getting bored watching this? Uh, will a lot of people get bored watching this? Um, hello? I think I have a cat making some sound over there. Um, you gotta have a good character. Um, I show others the work, get feedback. Um, don't be afraid to get critical feedback. I think that's something that's hard uh, and painful, but it always makes me better. And um, and then um, oh, and then still photographs. I use a lot of still photographs in here. Um, I talked about the power of listening, but this idea, idea of a, as a still photographer is my background. Why not use it? So I use them a lot in the film, especially in moments where there was something really uh, uh, kind of a feeling that we wanted to sit with, and just allows you to really video tends to be so literal uh, unless it's maybe in slow motion but even then it it just it has so much information that it prevents i think sometimes our brain from just like oh just feeling something so i, I love still photography and i think that's one of the things i continue to try to find ways to use these are just a few stills from the film i wanted to show not not really a lot but um yeah i was gonna look at the time 6 30. um okay yeah i i thought maybe um in a minute, I can show you one other scene from the film. Um, but uh, I, I wanted to show you, yeah, some pictures here. This is just briefly. I'm um, so um, I'm not I'm not at Care Eleven anymore. Actually, uh, it's a long story. I posted about it on Facebook. Anyone's welcome to friend me on there. I'd love to, to get connected. But I also about two months ago, I ended up losing my job because I ended up leaving, likely leaving the keys in my company car. It was stolen. And they fired me. It's a really shocking moment. But um, but it's actually been a a kind of an opportunity for me to get pushed out into the documentary field in a way that was much more urgent, obviously, but also I'm, I, it's been a freeing experience. I was kind of have kind of reached the end of my ability to grow at a TV station. And I knew that but I didn't have a vehicle for like, so now I'm, I'm, uh, we're working towards some getting some funding on docs. I'm doing freelance and I'm kind of like in a new part where I'm, 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 I, 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 I'm going to show you some work on a new doc I'm working on but also just at this point where I have the freedom to actually like go fishing on a Friday, which is really fun for me. Um, and uh, you know, my kids are all home. So I'm also spending a little more time with them because they're all online learning. But um, anyway, I, I don't think I want to get a job. I, I kind of think I'm done working for the man. Uh, you know, even though it's a little scary, I think I'm gonna really thrive in a freelance world and I'll have more creative freedom to do doc projects and, and, and work that I care deeply about. So anyway, this, this documentary uh, briefly, I'm working on, this is, uh, just some stills from it. I have the same thing where I did a lot of video. It's on kind of green burial and also this idea of um, um, what does death mean to a child and how do you be honest in, about death in a way that is really uh, open. So this basically woman was dying of cancer. Uh, she she adopted um, a six-year-old little girl with her husband and then she found out she had terminal cancer and that's a really hard moment. And But just uh, they decided to die, she, to die at home, to die in a, a way that's like green where you mean you kind of embalm the body at home and the body stays at home for viewing and and, just, and and they really employ this idea of just talking really honestly with Ruby, the six-year-old you'll see in this in these pictures about death and about her their mother. And so I'm just gonna show the pictures. I'm not even gonna talk talk over them. They're 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 a little bit 
uh, hard to look at. There is a, a, you know, she's dead in some of these photos. So I, I let you know if anybody is, might be triggered by that. It's, they're tasteful, but there is some of that. And then I'm, you know, uh, I, I have a lot of great audio and video that I'm going to working on collecting and putting together. I think it might probably be a short doc and I'm working on it with my friend Lindsay. So anyway, I'll show you the pictures. So anyway, um, this was uh, about two years ago I shot this. It was actually 4K11, so I have to work out that, um, which I think I'm hoping I can do. And then also I think um, Lindsay and I are going to reshoot now Ruby now, two years later, who she's a lot older, and Rob has moved on a little bit. And uh, um, I think it could just it'd be a nice progression of time. But anyway, there's that. And then um, uh, and I, I wanted to talk about this briefly. Because really, I think this is probably true for about everybody here. Um, you know, I, I know that my, my, you know, I have a lot of, I, ha I had a lot of ambition. I still do about like where I wanted to do and how you know, big projects. But I think ultimately, um, uh, I think that translates to different things for different people. And and I just encourage you to follow your own, um, whatever it is that, that brings you joy and fills you up, fills your bucket, um, and and makes you feel like you you you're doing something that feels good in the world do it and, and i i don't know what that is for you i encourage you to sit with that and think about that and 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 if it's in whatever it is do it because uh you know you have to be careful and I, i've had to have this be careful like my father wanted me to be a writer you know or, or, or study writing and i realized i don't want to do that um and you know what, what, what anyway i just i i, I uh it, this is different for everybody and so so um and it may not, it may not be journalism for you it may be journalism but um just find something to do meaningful. Um, and that's along those lines. And I wanted to see if I could show you uh, one other video here. Um, oh, all right. Um, not that. Oh, uh, uh, let me just see. I can't really see it. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I think we have about five minutes left. I was going to show you. Um, well, I'll just show you one last video and then I, I, I can show you some more stuff from the film, but I feel like it's better to use questions because I, I feel like it might as well if you have any questions for me. But um, w one video I, I wanted to share uh, is uh, uh, today, yesterday, um, totally tangent, um, we got a dog um, and something my daughter has and all of our kids have been just lobbying for for a long time and cheesy. But I, this idea of I, um, all any, any video that works is going to make you feel something. And this video makes me feel something, and I wanted to share it with you because it's 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 uh, it's so cute. This was yesterday when we brought the dog home and surprised her with it. She's been it's been like a year since she's been talking about this. Um, so here we go. Thanks for indulging me. I, I, I'm hoping you might enjoy this too. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I just thought I, that just to me example how any any piece of journalism, any piece of work, uh, it, I just 
makes you feel something and that's all I'm really trying to do. So uh, with that, I'm gonna wrap it up. And, and again, I, like I have other things I could show, but I, I, I'll just kind of throw it back to you, Will, and see what you think. That was just so great. <laughs> that's really great. Um, and I'm gonna stop, or can you stop sharing your screen? Oh, yep. oh, wait, I think I can do it. There we go, maybe. Yeah, um, really, that was really wonderful. <laughs> What's the dog's name? Um, the dog didn't come home with a name. Well, it did come home with a name called Yapper. We're like, no. Um, so we changed it to Pepper, which sounds like Yapper. Um, <laughs> Pepper. Is my camera working now? Speaking of camera, oh, there we go. All right. There we go. Um, that was great. Um, well, thank you. That was, that was all of that was really great. So I have a bunch of questions. And if, and if you guys have questions, please drop them into the chat or the Q&A, whichever uh, works best for you. I, I, a couple of things from what you said, you know, early on, you said, um, you know, go out and, and call up Time Magazine and go show your work the way you did with, with Michelle or whoever. And I think that that kind of attitude carries through to your work as well. You personally, I mean, like, I've, you know, your projects over the years that you get people that you can put a giant ear on and get people to come up and talk to you, but that you can go into the home of someone who's, you know, dying and make those really personal, intimate photos and get them to trust you. And then a year inside a, you know, a predominantly black elementary school that probably has a lot of, um, you know, concerns about how they're going to be portrayed in the media. And I wonder just, you know, part of that's probably just your personality, but what's your, how do you do that? How do you build trust? How do you let a school let you in for an entire year or a, you know, a family into their home? It's a very good question. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't know that, I mean, I've, I failed on many times, so <laughs> you're seeing all my successes, um, but uh, it, it's very hard. And I, I, it's actually not even that hard. I think really just, um, I, I've talked about this idea of, of uh, being genuinely interested in people's lives, you know, like really truly wanting to understand and, and listen. And I think um, people are smart. And so kids are smart. And if they know I'm there just to get a good sound bite for the news and get the hell out of there, um, they're not, they're going to know that. Um, but if they know that I'm there in it to win it, I'm going to, I'm going to be there tomorrow. I'm going to, you know, I, I ate lunch with the children at Lucy Laney almost every day I was there, um, you know, and, and uh, let them play with my cameras. And, and, uh, you know, early on, um, I was like this big intimidating guy. What are you doing here? And eventually they was like, Hey, Mr. Ban, you know, I was just like one of the staff members walking around and, and I was able to film many intimate moments, you know, kids in crisis uh, and, and parents were on board with this idea of me having me there. Um, just because I, I, I was, I was, I was not, you know, going to just come and leave. And I think also just uh, uh, there was a genuine sense that I was wanting to know about their lives. And I think who doesn't, who, who, who listening right now, if someone came up and said, Hey, what is, what's really, what really motivates you? What, what is something you cared a lot about? Tell me a little bit about that. Like, and, and if you, and if you ask folks a question like that and really provide a safe space for them to say it, um, they're going to recognize that, Hey, this person, this person kind of wants to know about me and I might as well tell them because I'm, you know, well, why not? Like, I, I think people open up in that situation and, you know, like with the, the death, uh, the green burial thing, you know, very clearly on, I think, I, I, you know, is any moment that is too emotional or raw, just kick me out. But I'd like to be there for everything because I think it's an important chance for people to learn and about what it's like to die at home and to talk to children, honestly. And I'd like to be there for everything. And, and I think they understood that intent and they, you know, I got lucky with the subject. A lot of people, a lot of people are not open to cameras. And that's hard as a photographer to be refused. But I think, you know, I'm also just like a friendly guy sometimes. You know, I, I sometimes I emphasize the friendliness, and uh, and and I don't always use my camera either. I think a lot of times I've I've often just did not bring a camera, and just hung out as a person. And that's sometimes hard to see things you should shoot. But um, yeah, that was a combination of all that stuff, I suppose. How many uh, days a week were you in the school? You were there the whole year. Um... Yep. What kind of time were you spending? How did you build trust with the administration initially with Maury? Yeah, well, we had an early on meeting with the school district, and that was a challenge. There was a lot of intense skepticism early on, um, and um, but they kind of gave us the the yellow light, uh, as sort of like you can try it and see what happens. Um, and then um and then like I said early on, we met with the entire staff of Lucy Laney and said, "This is what we want to do. This is who we are." And a lot. I remember one teacher, Miss Walton, um, said very clearly to me. Um, she said, Mr. Ben, you ain't never getting in my room. You know, she's like, no, you ain't never getting in my room. You know, and she was a fifth grade teacher, which is the highest, um, uh, highest grade in the school. And, and there's a little more, 
you know, when older kids, you have to be a little more strict. And, and there's, you know, Mari talked about this idea, and especially in African American culture, there's a little, sometimes can be more what, what is perceived as yelling or intensity. And, and they didn't want that misinterpreted by some white dude with a camera. And I understood that. And I was cognizant of that. Um, so I basically uh, just hung out with Miss Walton all year long. And, and we, um, Sophia, one of the um, students who ended up profiling a lot, um, was in Miss Walton's class. And towards the end of the year, I said, Miss Walton, can I come into your class? Uh, um, Sophia's there, and and she said, okay, fine, you know, because because I, I was there, I was there like a hundred days by then, and she's like, you know, I mean, and she had seen also we had we had been putting um, pieces regularly on TV um, to kind of build credibility in the community, which really helped. That was really great. She could see that you know where our hearts lie. Um, so I put a microphone on her, and I just had like a slider in there, and like she just let me do it, and that was like a little personal achievement for me to get in Miss Walton's <laughs> class. That's great. That's great. Sophia is amazing. I'd love to hear more, but there's some questions that came in. So maybe I'll get back to yeah. Sophia, but um, uh, can you talk, uh, Kate wants to know if you could talk more about that transition you made from newspapers to television, uh, maybe some of the technology barriers you had to overcome, and, you know, what yeah. else happened? Yeah, well, uh, you know, I had, I had been doing a little video at, at, um, at Pioneer Press, um, you know, just on my own kind of self-taught, like I said, I would did the lynda.com, just learn a program and and um, it wasn't a real valuable thing to the, 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 the newspaper entity. Early on, newspapers were really investing in video. And I think um, there was a recognition that it's not like where it's at. You know, we're kind of like bread and butter, got to get the paper out. So they didn't, you know, it became kind of like, oh, you're going to do a video. Um, but some of my videos were kind of like well shared, uh, you know, uh, kind of kind of virally in the, in the local journalism world in the Twin Cities. And so I got a little more time to work on it. And, um, I, I guess the biggest challenge coming into TV, I, I couldn't believe this the first day I got there. Like, you know, Pioneer Press, I would do a video, maybe take a week or two. Sometimes I would work on little short documentary things and it would take a couple months. Um, but in TV, like we was in the news meeting at nine o'clock and then we went out to shoot something and it was on air at five o'clock. What? I mean, on air at five o'clock, that blew my mind. And so the quality of my work initially was just really crappy, just like, just like, just basically just shit it out and get it on TV. I was just, <laughs> was really not fun. Uh, and so I had to sort of let go of the perfectionist in me, which wanted to get everything just right and just get stuff on TV. Um, and, and it was a learning process. I learned to work really quickly, to mic people, do live shots. Like I just learned the craft and the, the technology of video really well. And then when I had more time and I was able to pitch longer stories, I had all that under my, my belt. Um, so, you know, it was fun. It was fun to learn that stuff, but it's ultimately not that rewarding to shoot a live shot or to turn something really fast. It's so stressful because newspapers, if you miss deadline for 10 minutes, like, okay, we'll hold the presses or whatever, no big deal. You've missed the deadline in TV. It's a big deal. I mean, they have black air and nothing on TV. <laughs> really bad news. Um, you, you hear from it. And I missed slot, they called missing slot a couple of times. And, um, oh, it's not, it's not a terrible feeling. So there's, there's no, there's no flexibility in the deadline like there is in newspapers. Why did they hire a still photographer from a newspaper? Were you brought in to do just traditional video stuff or? Well, yes. I mean, um, Jane Helmke, who's a brilliant, was a brilliant news director at the time. And she's the one who sort of made our film possible. She had been seeing my work over at uh, Care 11. Uh, you know, I had done like five or six videos and they were good. I mean, they were really good videos. So clearly I, I could do it. Um, and I think she was just like, uh, she recognized that um, I would bring something different and she wanted that, you know, and and, and I wanted to grow. I was kind of, I was done shooting the same parade every year, uh, the same Vikings game, football games, but, but now I've been there for a dozen years at the paper, um, kind of had reached the end of my ability to grow. And so it was a great opportunity for me. I mean, Care 11 is considered like in terms of local television, like the best station in the country for photojournalism. They win station of the year all the time and the really amazing shooters there. And to, to imagine working in a room at the Pioneer Press where I have an issue with the uh, video, I, there's no one around to ask. I just like Google it. But at, at the Care 11, I have an issue. I'm like, hey, one of 10 people who are video professionals, come over here. You know, I, I just had this kind of wealth of, of, of knowledge about um, the technical aspects of the of video and just good, talented people to work next to. So that was really fun for me. I don't, you know. Yeah, no, that all makes sense. Uh, let's see what else we got here. If you took your We Hear You piece and added a tagline for any corporation in the country, you'd have a better ad than anything that appeared in this year's Super Bowl. Have you ever considered going that route? You know, like, like advertising or whatnot? Or just, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, hey, 
if someone wants to pay me a crap ton of money to do that, I would do it as long as it's not for like some terrible bank or something, you know. Um, I'm doing some uh, freelance thing now for Mary, for like a, a luxury designer shoe company that's just going to pay me a, a good chunk of money to do shoes, you know, and I'm, hey, I'm doing it. Um, so, you know, for, as a freelancer, I have the ability now to just shoot stuff like that. And, and it's, what's cool for me now is like, if I take that creativity to them, um, it's a, a, a more value than it necessarily was at the TV station where um, if I did something amazing or just phoned it in every day, it doesn't even matter. I still got paid my salary. But now I, I can kind of sell my my uh, my creative like like this person wisely notices like I, I do have something that's unique and, and if I can you know monetize it to pay for food on the table but also to make room for documentary stuff I will I would love to do it so if this person has an idea of some great ad send it my way uh, I would love to do that yeah no, I know what you mean though that's fun to think about all right. But I get like 2% because it went through me, right? Uh, that... Yes. I've, well, I would do three because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Three's good. I, two and a half be fine. Two and a half's good. Um, do you plan on doing any more emotional and important documentaries like the one you did at Lucy Lane? I mean, what are the, do you have yeah, specific definitely. plans uh, or long-term definitely. plans? Well, I mean, I'm doing this one on the, on the, the, the death thing. Uh, definitely won't be as like inspiring, but it will be, I think, a real opportunity to, to learn something. It'll be a short doc. And then. Um, Lindsay and I, um, my colleague who was a co-director on the film and a really great storyteller, she's now independent as well. And so we're, we just went on a big long walk today and we're dreaming up stuff. You know, we have lots of dreams, lots of ideas. One is to, um, I, I, you know, I do think that education and kids is something that I love and I'm good at and I care deeply about. I got four kids in school and, you know, the film kind of helped me realize that this is a place that I feel comfortable. So. Um, so we're considering doing a, maybe a series on kind of radical leadership around the country in terms of principals and leaders who are really, what are they doing that they're really kind of causing good trouble, like in the spirit of John Lewis and um, um, Mari Friesleben, the main character of our film, has started this group of principals called Good Trouble Principals, where, uh, you know, hundreds of principals around Minnesota have signed on to this letter basically saying we're going to consciously decenter whiteness and decenter uh, standardized testing because it's just has a racist uh, origin story and it's and it's and it's and it's uh, kind of labeling students in a very hurtful demeaning way and it's and so and uh, it's making a difference and so how, maybe maybe that could be a vehicle for us to, to explore and so we're talking to some producers who saw our film and really loved it and wanted to kind of help us kind of get a pitch maybe a sizzle reel to sell to the people so that's just that's like a little behind the scenes stuff that um it's the kind of thing that if I was still working at Care 11 um, you know, I just didn't have the brain power to think about anything except just daily news. But now I'm, I'm really just I'm, I'm listening to um, really cool people on different, you know, um, professional development things about how to independently fund a film. And I'm just kind of getting in that world full force. And it's really fun for me. It's super exciting and more exciting than, you know, Carol Levin was a great place. But um, I was towards the end there uh, every day was just doing a Zoom interview, basically, because that's what you have to do in a pandemic and this terrible terrible b-roll working in my basement um not fun so it was kind of a kind of a nice thing to to be let go in a weird way but anyway yeah that's we have a, I, I don't really know exactly what's next but i want to do more documentary that's kind of where it's at right now wonderful um oh do you recognize a good character instantly or if not how do you recognize a yeah. good character you know that's a very good question i think you know uh, Lindsay and i are talking about this new um uh idea a series on on, on leadership and 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 it, it's like the casting, finding a character, really. Um, that th that that's all. Uh, that's all. That's like ninety percent of what we have to do as journalists. Is is if you have a story, if you want to do a story on, like, let's say you want to do a story on, on um on voting systems or whatever. Like nobody cares about voting systems, you know. Or you want to do a story on, on on uh, I don't know, even something as 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 clear as racism or or whatever. It's very hard to generate interest on a topic like that. But if you find a character, if you find someone to to, to cling on to, because as human beings, all we want to do is connect. I, 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 this is my feeling. We want to connect with other people and see them and see ourselves in them and feel something that they're feeling. And we want to feel something on ourselves, our, our, feel, yeah, our own feelings. So I just feel like finding a good character, you can make anything interesting. You really can. Um, and so I don't have the ability to recognize a good character right away. Although maybe I do. I mean, uh, we knew with Mari that there was something amazing about her. And Sophia, the little girl in this film, which um, really is an extraordinary little girl. And maybe I thought I could, I could just share a little bit of a, a little clip from her. Um, but I remember when I first met her, she was walking by the hallway and she was carrying this book like this thick. 
And she said, hey, uh, hey, Mr. Ben, how are you? And then just like, was just talking to me and talking to me. And I could, I could just tell there was something about her that I wanted to spend time with her. I wanted to sit down and ask her about what, what, what was on her mind. So we did a couple early interviews with her and it's just like, so there is, there is something about, I think there's a certain, a good character, someone who not only uh, has amazing things to feel, but is able to tell you them, you know, able to express themselves. And that's hard because, you know, sometimes that means some of the more interesting people you can't really focus on because they're just kind of hard to, not very good communicators, you know, yeah. so that, anyway, it's a good question. If you watch the, if you haven't seen the film and you watch the first, Sophia shows up in the first eight or 10 minutes, I think, you'll just want to keep watching because you want her to come back. She is just, she's just great. Yeah. She's, she's just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see. There's a bunch of other questions here. I want to try to get to them. Do it. And I've gotten, what have we got here? Um, so when you were working at, uh, you know, Care 11, the, the story, uh, how did the stories pop up for those big projects like The Ear Man? Where, where did that come from? And, and how do you get the time and the space? The, the, uh, yeah, well, like I said, um, um, there are always people I work with who are no people, who are people will who are finding reasons to just say, oh, nah, stick to your, what you stick to what you know, Ben. We don't got time for that. And then there are people who are yes people, who are people who are open to ideas and willing to take risks and willing to tr let you try something and fail. And I had a leader like that at Care 11, uh, Jane Helmke, who was willing to say yes to the ear. I mean, what a what a crazy idea. I had that exact same idea at the Pioneer Press. And um, and they're like, oh, just, you know, I, we don't know. There's a lot of hesitation. Basically, they just ended up saying no. And, and Jane said, give it a shot. You should give me 500 bucks to work with this local artist to build the ear. And, um, and it, was, uh, it was a success. I did it like five years in a row at the State Fair. And I asked all different kinds of questions. And if, if you Google it, Care 11 ear, you'll see other, other um, questions, you know. But um, it was actually uh, um, extremely unpleasant doing the ear. It was so heavy and sweaty and terrible and awkward. And I had to, I mean, so many people came up and said the same stupid things like, oh, uh, you know, can you hear me now? Or, you know, I got a big Q-tip for you. You know, just like dumb stuff. And just like, they're thinking they're so funny. And so I, I was like a lesson in me kind of smiling and pretending like I was interested in everyone, even though inside I was like, get the hell away from me. You're, you know, I don't care what you say. Um, I'm just looking for those little nuggets, those little, those little beautiful nuggets that they are always there. It's like sifting through gold. And if you just, just pull those out, it just seems, I just love listening to it and love watching that. But uh, it was like maybe three hours of just crap, of just absolute crap. And it was very embarrassing and humiliating. Not always, but like, yeah, people like, what the hell is that? You know, uh, and they get, uh, and so, but then towards the end of it, people would like want to come over and get selfies with me. And they're like, oh, it's the Carol over here. You know, and they're like, what's the question today? So it kind of built a, a you know, tiny following. And that was, that was fun. You know, initially it was just like very confusing. And it always was. A lot of people have never seen me. That's great. But, it was a great idea. It was very fun seeing that. Um, uh, do you have any regrets about staying in breaking news as long as you did, or was it important to get the skills that you got out of it? I, I think, I don't know if re regrets, I mean, I, yeah, I think I, maybe I do a little bit. I mean, uh, you know, I stayed at the Pioneer Press for 12 years and it was a, it was a great newspaper, a lot of good people there. And, um, but I, I, I do feel like, um, that, uh, I mean, I guess, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if regrets is the right word. I, I, I love, I love working. Uh, newspapers. It made me. It was really satisfying. I love knowing what's going on every day. I love, you know, being connected to the news and feeling relevant and 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 tweeting the latest news and the, the best pictures and the and you know I like the competition of trying to beat the other guys and and that's all really fun. And so uh, there's a real value to being a journalist in that environment. And I don't I don't down downplay it at all. Um, I I think eventually I just kind of got maybe bored or just like knew that I had something more to give. You know, and I think that's kind of the thing. I, I knew that I wanted to do, I, I had more in me than just taking pictures. Um, I could do it and I was good at it. And I, you know, but, but is, was that going to be enough for me? Is that going to, you know, do I want to retire doing that? Probably not. And, and, and I, I don't knock people who do it because it's a, it's a very rewarding, challenging, amazing career. And um, so there's no, but for me, I just, I wanted to try something different and new. And I think that's, I think that's kind of always been the case with me. I kind of get bored, you know, and, uh, you know, I think, um, I think now that I can think about big projects, I, I don't know, maybe I'll get bored of that. Um, I do love to go uh, fishing, so maybe I'll become a, a, a YouTube fisherman and, and uh, do a bunch of videos about fishing. There you go. That can be, <laughs> give yourself a couple of years and then you can go there. Um, 
what inspired you to start the stories you started? Like why the, the story about death? Why the story about the school, I guess, or the, is the question. Yeah, I, I think, you know, like I, I talked a little bit about this idea of like, a, it is a real privilege. I mean, I'm, I, I live with, uh, I mean, I don't wanna get too idealistic about it, but I, I, I know I live with a lot of privilege as a white fan and as a journalist, both things afford me, a, a, you know, I have a lot of power as a journalist. And and um and I don't suffer a lot of the uh, the things that the people of color do, and I recognize that too. And and so like, what what could I do, to, you know, how how can I be of more use? You know, how can I go to sleep and feel like, well, shit, that was that was a good day. I'm 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 making a difference. You know, um, and so I, I just wanted that feeling. I mean, maybe that's selfish in a way, but I wanted to feel like like um like my life had that meaning to it, and, and not that it didn't beforehand, but but um because all journalism is important. It really is. Like you need to know which roads are closed down and how to get around them. Like that's important. So, so really anytime I, you know, we were able to just inform people, it's great, but, but, but um, I'm really rambling a little bit, but yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. yeah. We're, uh, we're close to the end of the time, but we got, I think we'll maybe one or two more questions. Sure. Um, or maybe just one last chip one here and then I've got one for you. Okay. Um, Dana asks, can you tell us about what you've learned from exploring the world? Uh, you know, I am not that worldly. I mean, I definitely travel a little bit, but I've done mostly local journalism. Um, so, you know, I like to say, I don't really, I, I can't really answer that question. I, I, I uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I, I think there's a certain humanity in all people. I mean, that's a cheesy thing to say, but boy, isn't that true? As a journalist, you realize that early on, like everyone is motivated by their desire to feel connected and love and feel love and, and feel like, like they have a place in the world. And so that is a connecting element in every story and every good piece of journalism. Um, so maybe maybe I could say that. Fair enough. So uh, uh, last question, then we'll, we'll wrap up and let you get on and back to your dog and your family. Um, yeah. You've been out of college, you know, a, a long time now, but what, what do you think students should be doing in college while they have the chance to prepare for, you know, yeah. knowing that whatever it is they want to do when they get done, like what do you wish you had done or what did you do that worked? That's a brilliant question. I'm glad you asked that. And I think, um, you know, I had a slide in there that I deleted today and I'm going to say it because I was like, oh, no, no, no. but like, like uh, the slide said, does anyone really give a shiznit about your grades? Like, of course they do. And especially if you're going to graduate school, it's really important. And I don't mean to diminish the idea of working hard, but like, I, I remember when I was in school, there were some, some students were so focused on, okay, what's the assignment? I don't want to miss it. I got to make sure it's in time and do it. And like, there was such an interest in like getting it done without the recognition, like, what are you gonna do next year when you're out of school? Like, where are you gonna be? What do you wanna do? And, and how do you wanna get there? Not that you need to start freaking out about that, but, but, but um, to have the long view a little bit is a value. And, and, and ultimately, I know for what I wanted to do, which is be a newspaper photographer, um, you know, uh, I, didn't, I wasn't destined to necessarily go to graduate school or, or whatnot. And, and that's when your grades really do matter. So I don't, I, I, grades do matter. But what I wanted to do, they didn't matter. N not one person said, okay, let me see your uh, transcript then before I give you this internship. Like, yeah, let's see the, let's see your work. Let's see your heart. Let's see who you are. What motivates you? Why are you here? Like, so, so grades in my situation were, 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 were not as important. So I, I, I only say that because um, sometimes I think it, it, um, that's just important for to be focused on, on the long game. And then I guess um, for me, I, uh, I remember, you know, I realized I, I needed to have, and back when I was a student, photo stories were a motivating force to get, a, get something good that told a story over time. And it was really hard to do that as a student, but I just kind of, I kind of focused on building one story that I could share and that was you know, a little bit impressive. And, 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 and for whatever that means in your life, um, <coughs> take it where it is, but I, I just feel like I kind of let other things slide. I, I remember there was one um, class called Materials and Processes of Photography at RIT, mm -hmm. where you learn about silver-based prints and, and the technology behind photography. And I realized, I don't care about this. Hey, I, I, I'm never gonna, I don't, I mean, we're all required to take it. I didn't care about it. I squeaked by, I got like a D. I just had to pass it. That's all I had to do. And then I spent all my other time taking pictures, going out, spending time with people and trying to do a story, trying to connect and, and do, the, do what I really wanted to do and make it as good as possible. So, so whatever it is that you're interested in, if you're interested in becoming a writer, to, um, to make sure you pass everything and do well, but focus on ways to make your writing as good as possible and work on stories you care about that can set you, not let's set you apart. I don't want to be competitive about it, but like you need to have work that um, that you, uh, that will resonate with people when you try to get a, a job or an internship. So whatever that means to you, that's, that's your goal, not just uh, the moment in time you're in, but like, yeah. 
So can I show one uh, 45 second clip of, of the of, uh, of uh, Sophia, which would just be a beautiful little thing, way to end it? Yeah, that would be a perfect way to end. She's wonderful. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So th this is from the trailer. Um, and uh, where is it? Oh, here's the trailer. I'm going to share my screen. Thank you guys for staying around so long. Okie dokie. I'm, I'm not going to show the whole trailer. It's it's only two minutes long, but let's just go towards the end here. And uh, here we go. She knows what kind of kids we are. Back up a little bit. Sorry. Eve, I choose to. And even if I'm proven wrong, I will go down believing. She makes this school like the best school in the world that I've ever been to. I've been to a lot of schools. She does have a lot of love for us. I will be just like you. You do? People might think that we're just bad and not smart. She knows what kind of kids we are. They're children. They're pure. And imagine if we as a society loved them first in that moment, if we just took a snapshot. Sometimes we all have to fight the battle of that horrible thing that lurks behind hope. But it does get better. That's what hope's there for. You just gotta hope. She's just great. That's a great way to end. She's wonderful. Thank yeah. you, Ben. It was good to see you. And thank you for sharing all that. That was great. It is a lot of fun. And if anybody wants to reach out on email, uh, Ben Garvin at Gmail, uh, send me a note or connect on Facebook or Twitter. It's just Ben Garvin. And I'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah. And thank you all. Uh, we got Lynn Johnson next week, another great photographer. So please come on back and uh, yeah, have a good week. And Ben, thank you. It was really good to see you. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Bye, everybody.